Hi gymnasts, my name is Nora, or you can call me my kid's spirit name, which is Ginger. Hi gymnasts, my name is Clover and I'm super excited to be teaching your kinder gym classes this week. Teaching from my home to yours is a little bit different, but we can still have lots of fun doing gymnastics from home. Before we get started, let's all go wash our hands with my friend String Bean. Alright, second song is to the tune of Row 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 Your Boat. I know you guys all know that song. So it's a little bit slower, but like I said, 20 seconds at least. You can go longer than that, so it does not matter. Let me get my hands wet. Get soap. Alright, let's do song number two. Wash, wash, wash your hands gently till they're clean. Tops and bottoms round the thumbs and in between. Wash, wash, wash your hands gently till they're clean. Tops and bottoms round the thumbs and in between. Okay, song's over. I'm going to grab my paper towel. Awesome, great job. Thanks for that fun hand washing video, String Bean. Now it's time for us to warm up. First, I need to clear my space. Now that I have some room, we are gonna play a warm up game called Bones No Bones. When I say bones, we are gonna be up and moving. You can run in place like me, or you can move in a small circle in your house. When I say no bones, we're gonna fall to the floor like we have no bones. Ready? Let's get started. We're gonna start with running bones. Ready, set, bones. Swing your arms while you run. Run super fast. And don't forget to breathe. And no bones. Now for bones, we'll do skipping bones. Try to get your knees up really high. And no bones. This time when I say bones, let's do some tiptoe walks. Bones. When we walk up on our tiptoes, our legs should be nice and straight and we should reach our arms up to the ceiling. And we'll do step kick bones. When we do step kicks, our legs should be as straight as they can. and make sure you're breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth and no bones. Now when I say bones, we can do some bunny hops. When we do bunny hops, our feet should be glued together and our hands are on our hips. Ready, bones. Great bunny hops, good job. I wonder how high you can jump. And no bones. Take a second to breathe. We'll do three deep breaths. Ready? Last one. This time we are going to do bear crawl bones. Bear crawls are up on our hands and feet and we have nice straight legs while we do bear crawls. Remember, you can crawl in place or in a circle. And no bones. For this last one, we're gonna do running bones one more time. Ready, set, running bones. Keep going, just a little bit longer, you're doing great. And no bones. I'm gonna take a water break, so you should do the same. And now it's time to stretch. So I'm gonna start reaching up to the sky and then I'm gonna reach down to my toes. For five, four, three, two, and one. Now I can come down onto my bottom and sit in a pike position. Pike is where we have our legs straight and our feet together out in front of us. Reach up in the air and reach down to your toes. And we will hold that for five, four, 
three, two, one. Now we're gonna come to a straddle position with our legs out to the side, nice and straight and our toes pointed. So in our straddle position, we are going to make a pizza today. So imagine that we keep our cheese over here and we're gonna take this arm and reach all the way to grab our cheese. How much cheese can you grab? I'm gonna grab as much cheese as I can. I like really cheesy pizza. And now our sauce is kept on this side. So we take this arm and we grab lots of sauce. We're gonna make a really big pizza today. And now reach up in the air and grab your toppings. I like olives on my pizza. What toppings do you like? Now let's spread out our sauce. Spread it all around, get it on the whole pizza. And now it's time to sprinkle our cheese. Remember we grabbed lots of cheese, so sprinkle it all the way on our pizza. And now our toppings. And let's reach all the way to the middle to put our toppings in the middle of our pizza. And we're gonna hold that for five seconds. Ready, count with me. Five, four, three, two, one. Now let's put it in the oven in our pike position and push the pizza in. And we're gonna hold that for five more seconds. If you want, you can count with me again. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's check our pizza. Do we think it's ready? It looks ready to me. Let's pull it out and take three big bites. Ready? One, two, and three. That was a tasty pizza. Now we can come up to our knees and we are going to do a stretch called the frog splits, which will stretch our hips. So I'm gonna put my elbows down on the ground and I'm gonna pull my knees out to the side while keeping my feet close together in the back. We're gonna hold frog splits for 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7. See how my feet are close together in the back. Five, four, three, two, and one. Gently come up back onto our knees and we're gonna put one foot out in front of us, put our hands on our hips and we are going to push our hips forward to the floor. We want our hips to be close to the floor and our chests up. We should be able to draw a diagonal line from one knee up to the front knee. And now we're gonna take our hips and push them back so our front leg is straight. And we're gonna try and keep our foot in the same spot. We don't wanna move our foot. And we're gonna reach down to our toes. And we can hold that for five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna switch and do the same on the other leg. Hands on our hips, push it forward. and push back, straight leg, and down to our toes for five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna lace our fingers together like this and we'll make some spaghetti and some meatballs. And now we're gonna make our very favorite book. We're gonna read it super duper fast and now let the floor read your book. And now we're gonna let the floor read the cover of the book. Now for our very last stretch, we are going to do a stretch called tabletop. We're gonna sit on our bottoms with our hands behind us and we're gonna push our bottom off the ground and make our belly nice and straight. So your belly should look like a, a table and be totally flat. So this time you can try it with me. Sit on your bottoms, put your hands behind you and push up off of the ground and let's hold it for five, four, three, two and one. Great job, thanks for warming up and stretching with me. Now let's go do our lesson. Today, we are going to be learning some floor skills. But first, before we do our floor skills, we need to make sure we have a place to do them. So if you have a towel or a blanket, maybe you have a mat at home like I do, or a yoga mat, you could use couch cushions, pillows, Maybe you have some carpeting area in your house, and that would be a good spot to do it. 
some place that's soft so you're not going to hurt your head if you roll on the ground. You can even stack a couple blankets together. I want you to go grab that super speedy vest. Are you ready to go get your floor? Go. Whoa, that was so fast. I barely even had time to blink. Good job. So the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to learn some positions. So come on, sit down with me. We're going to sit down on the floor. The first one we're going to learn is tuck position. So we're going to bring our knees up to our belly and our feet on the ground. You can wrap your arms around your knees if you'd like to. This one is called tuck position because we're kind of tucked into a ball. Good job. I can see that everyone's doing this with me. This is really important for our forward and our back rolls. All right, now we're going to put our feet straight out in front of us. Can everybody do that? Good job. This one is called a pike position. It's kind of an L shape. You all are pros at this. Nicely done. All right, the next one is straddle. So in straddle, you're going to take your legs from pike and spread them out to the side so that they form a V. Good job. You can have your feet pointed up towards the sky or pointed out towards the side. These are both also important for our forward rolls and for our jumps. Good job. All right. Can everybody come and lay down on the floor with me so we can do hollow body position? This one's kind of like being a boat. So we're going to lay down on the ground and we're going to take our shoulders and our feet up off the ground so that we form a boat. Good job. This position is really important for your handstands and your candlesticks. All right, the next one we're going to do is arch position. Come on, everybody lay on your stomach with me. Good job laying on your stomach. So this one's important for our bridges that we're going to do. So we're going to put our arms out in front of us and we're going to pick our arms and shoulders and feet up off the floor. I'm kind of going to be a boat again. Good job, you're all doing awesome. All right, and come back down. Good job going over our positions with me. Are we ready to learn some skills now? All right, let's all go stand at the end of our mat or towel, whatever you're using for floor. Good job, I can see you're all standing at the end and that means you're ready to do our first skill, which is a forward roll. So for our forward roll, we are going to start off standing, but then we're going to bend down to the ground and put our hands down on the ground. So when we roll forward, we're going to be rolling over our head, which means it's really important that we tuck our chin. So can everyone try really fast with me to tuck their chin down to their chest? Good job doing this with me. This is really important for all of your forward rolls and your backward rolls. All right, are we ready to roll? So we're gonna put our hands down on the ground. We're gonna tuck our chin as tight as we can and we're gonna push over our head. Good job, those look awesome. Let's try another one. Come on, walk back to the front of your mat or your towel or your blanket with me. Are we ready? Okay, I see that we're ready. We're gonna bend down, we're gonna put our hands down on the ground we're going to tuck our chin and we're going to push over our head. Excellent job. That was great. <clears throat> if you want to mix it up a little bit, we can do some other types of rolls. You can start in pike position or in straddle position. I know start in straddle. So you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to start from straddle, put your hands down on the ground. We're going to tuck our chin, push and roll back into straddle. Those are kind of different types of fun forward rolls. All right, the next one we're going to learn is our candlestick. So come on, sit back down on the ground with me for candlestick. So for this one, we are going to sit in our tuck position, but then we're going to lay down on our back. In candlestick, you're gonna pick your legs up, kind of like you would be in the bike position, but then pick your hips up off the floor too. Good job. All right, can everybody sit up this time? Back in tuck position again. 
Good job. So this time we're gonna roll back on our back and pick our legs up in the air. Are we ready? Set. And we're gonna roll back up and pick your feet up as high as you can. Try and touch the ceiling with your toes and come back down. Good job. That was awesome. Let's do one more. We're gonna roll back, pick our feet up, and come back down. Good job. Try to see if you can get your toes a little bit higher than the ceiling every time. It looked like you did last time. All right, the next one we're going to learn is our backward roll. So for our backward roll, can everybody come sit down on the ground with me again? We're gonna learn how we're supposed to be on in our backward roll on the ground. So we're gonna sit in tuck position again and we're gonna roll back onto our back, keeping our knees tucked in. We're gonna make stop sign hands with our hands and then we're gonna put them down on the ground behind us with our fingers facing towards our shoulders. So when we roll over our head backwards, we wanna make sure that we push off of our arms with our hands so that we don't hurt our neck. Good job. Can everybody try that one more time with me? We're gonna roll back and just put our hands on the ground. That looks awesome. Good job. All right, can everyone stand up with me now? So to start a backward roll, we're gonna start from standing up. So you're gonna stand up at the end of your mat. You can put your hands by your ears so that you're ready when you get to the ground. Are we ready to go? Okay, I thought so. So we're gonna sit and we're gonna push and tuck. Good job. I think we should try again, just to make sure we've got it. All right, everyone standing back at the end of your mat again. Good job. All right, we're gonna put our hands by our ears again. With our fingers pointing towards our shoulders, we're gonna sit and push back. Oops, I didn't quite make it that time. That's totally okay. That's why we can try a whole bunch of times. You wanna try again with me since I didn't make it last time? All right. We're gonna sit, roll, and punch. Good job. I got stuck on my hair that time. It happens. It's all right. All right. The next and last thing that we're gonna learn today is we're going to learn our levers and lever with the hop. So for a lever, we're gonna start off and put our hands down on the ground and put our foot up behind us. Good job. That was awesome. All right, we're gonna do that again, but this time we're gonna start from standing. So everybody put your arms up by your ears with me and we're gonna bend towards the ground and stand back up. Good job, that looked awesome. All right, let's do one more. This time we're gonna try and jump our foot that's on the ground off the ground, just a little bit. So everybody put your arms up by your ears with me. Good job. We're gonna bend towards the ground and do a little jump and stand back up. Good job, that looks awesome. And don't be worried if you can't do a skill the first time. Not everybody can do the skill the first time they try it. I missed one of my backward rolls, but you are all doing awesome. And I know you can do it, way to go. So for vault, we need two things. We need to have a little bit of space around us so that we can do some movement like running in place and skipping. If you have an area that you can do this in, like a hallway, maybe in your living room, it would be good to clear things out of the way. So you make sure that you don't run into any coffee tables or couches and that you have a safe space. The other thing that we need is something to be a vault. So I'm going to use this folded up square of towel you could use a blanket, a sheet, a couch cushion. You could put a piece of tape on the floor to be where you're going to be your vault and or pretend springboard. So for our first vault skill that we're going to do today, we're gonna to do step, jump to two feet. So you're gonna to wanna to find whatever you're gonna use for your vault, whether that's a piece of tape on the floor or some sort of folded up towel or blanket. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like and then we'll do some together. So you're gonna step on one foot and then jump to two feet 
when we land, we want to try and have our legs be a little bit bent and our hands out like stop signs in the front. All right, let's try some together. We're going to step and jump. Good job. Let's do a couple more. We're going to step and jump. And one last one. We're going to step and jump on two feet. That looks awesome. The next thing that we're going to learn how to do is one of my favorites, and that's called a squat on. So I'm going to show you what a squat on looks like. You're going to put your hands on either side of whatever you're using for your vault, and you're going to jump your feet up between your hands. Let's try two of these together. So we're going to bend down and put our hands on either side of our vault, just like that. And then you're going to jump your feet between your hands. Good job. Let's do one more of those. We're going to put our hands down and jump our feet between our hands and stand back up. The next thing that we're going to do is a straddle on. So with straddle on, we're going to put our hands together on the vault and we're going to jump our feet to the outside of our hands. Let's do two of those together. So put your hands down on whatever you're using for your vault and jump your feet to the outside of your hands. And let's do one more. Are you ready? Okay. Hands down and jump our feet. Wonderful job. The next one that we're going to do is a hurdle. So you can move whatever you're using for your vault for right now. So with a hurdle, I'm going to show you what one looks like and then we'll do some together. So I'm going to step on my right foot. I'm going to bring my left foot up. I'm going to jump on this leg and land on my right foot. I'll show you what it looks like a little bit faster. All right, let's try one of those together. So you're going to step on whichever foot you would like to, your right or your left. You're going to bring your opposite leg up. You're going to jump on the foot that's on the ground and land on your front foot that you had bent. Let's try one together a little bit faster. I know you can do it. Are you ready? So step, jump, and land on the other foot. Great job. That looks awesome. All right. Now we're going to hurdle, but then land on two feet. Kind of like you would jumping up onto a springboard. So I'll show you what this looks like, and then we'll do some together. So I'm going to step, hurdle, and jump together. All right, come try one with me. So you're going to start towards the end of where your area is so you have enough room to step. You're going to step, bring your legs up, jump, and feet together. Good job. Let's do two more of those, but trying to get them a little bit faster. You're going to step, bring your legs up, and jump. Good job. Let's do one more. Step, bring your legs up, and jump. Awesome job. If you would like to, you can try and get a little bit of a run to go into your hands. I'm going to go the opposite direction this time. So I'm going to start at the end of my mat. I'm going to take a couple of steps forward, and then hurdle and jump. If you have a bigger space, like a hallway or maybe outside, you can take a few more steps into your jump. I'm only taking one step and then doing my hurdle. Let's do one of those together. You can run for however far that you have space to run for. I'm going to step and then step into my hurdle and land on two feet. Excellent job. Thank you for doing ball for with me today and keep practicing those skills so you can keep getting better at them. Okay guys, now that we've washed our hands and we've warmed up, um, we can get going on gymnastics. So this video is going to be beam skills. Um, so the first thing we need to do is clear our space. Um, let me get my dog toys out of the way. Make sure that there's nothing in the way. My workspace. Okay, we're good. Um, so for beam, you're going to want to use something um, that like mimics a beam. So something that can like make a straight line. I'm using duct tape. This duct tape might be kind of hard to see. It's kind of a pretty color. 
but um, I just stretched it along my yoga mat. Um, you can find any kind of tape um, and any sort of like flat surface and just stretch that tape. Um, you can also maybe like roll up a blanket if you don't have tape on you. Um, you can use like a piece of yarn, piece of string, just anything that can kind of just make a straight line. Um, you can be creative with it. Like I said, if you don't have tape, just roll up a blanket. Um, you can, if you don't have anything at all, just use your imagination. Um, so yeah, just make yourself a nice little beam. Um, I use my duct tape along my yoga mat. And the longer you make your beam, the more room you'll have to practice the skills. So just keep that in mind. And I just, we're going to play a fun animal game on the beam. But first, I just want to go over some like the basic things to remember when you're walking on a beam. So the first thing is your head position. So let's ask ourselves and remember, I remember from last term, do we want our head to be looking down when we're walking on our beam? Or do we want our head to be up? Yeah, that's right. We want our head to be up. So when we're walking on our beam. We don't want to look like this. That's going to make us lose our balance. So when walking along our beam, we're going to look straight in front of us the whole time. Um, another thing to remember is we don't want to be like leaning forward or leaning backwards. That's going to make us lose our balance too. We want to be straight up. We want to have really good posture. That includes our head being up so that we can have the best balance possible. Okay, good job, you guys. Good job remembering that. Um, I think that we should get started with the animal game. So I just want to like pick different animals and walk across the beam um, acting out like those animals. <laughs> so bear crawls is something that we can do. Um, you're going to start with your feet on the beam. You're going to put your hands down on the beam as well. And this one can kind of be challenging um, to balance. So just try your best. Try your best to stay on the beam as much as possible. And you're going to put one hand in front of the other as you move your feet like this. Act like a bear. I'm not really sure if that's how bears actually walk, but it's what we call in gymnastics. So, okay, another animal we can do is like a dog or a cat. Um, probably should have started with this one. It's probably a little bit easier than bear crawl. But um, hands and knees walking. So one hand in front of the other while we crawl on our knees. Um, this one's probably easy if you have like more room, um, like longer beam, this one would probably be easier. But we can do it back now. So walking like a dog or a cat practice that one trying to keep your knee on the beam good job you guys um another animal we can do are bunnies we can do bunny hops um you can do hands on hips you can what do what do bunny arms look like like this kind of that might, that's more like a kangaroo maybe kangaroo bunny hops whichever one you want to pick um and we're gonna hop across our beam trying to stay on the line and we're just gonna do a little bunny hops. This is a good time to remember that when we're going across our beam, we wanna keep our head looking straight forward. So we're gonna do it again. And looking straight forward, we're gonna do our bunny hops. We can also practice our stretch jumps across the beam. Remember that's like one foot kind of in front of the other, looking straight forward. Start stretch jumps. Um, another animal, what else can we do? A flamingo. So, if you guys don't know, flamingos they oftentimes have one of their legs up. I don't really know why that is, but they do. So, they kind of just keep one of their legs up. We can practice walking like a flamingo one leg up, the other leg up, and we're making sure to still look straight forward. Other leg up, other leg up. And we can do that back. If you want to get a little creative with it, you can add the arms. <laughs> Dance like a flamingo. Remember to still look up. Keep our eyes forward. 
I don't actually know if that's how flamingos like dance, but I've seen this move. So we can practice doing that across the beam. That was actually fun. Let's do it again. Flamingo. Looking straight forward. Keeping our foot on the beam whole time. Okay. Good job, you guys. Such good flamingos. Um, we can also do, we can do crab walks across the beam. So we're acting like a little crab. This one might look just facing forward. And we're going to try to keep our feet and hands on the beam. Doing our crab walks. Good job, you guys. That one was challenging. And um, you can just keep practicing these animals. You can try to think of other animals on your own that you want to do across the beam. Um, have fun with it. Um, add the little, the little animal dance moves. Add the sound effects. Just have fun with it. Um, and remember that you can make your beam out of like almost anything. Um, I've rolled up blankets before to make a beam. Although tape, I do think works better. You can honestly use anything that can just mimic a straight line. So don't let being at home um, prevent you from practicing these beam skills. And you guys are doing so good. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more beam skill videos. Hi everyone, thanks for doing gymnastics with us today. Thanks Clover and Ginger for your lessons from your home and for working so hard to produce these videos. Everybody subscribe, there's gonna be more episodes. We're gonna to continue to grow as we create more, as we get your comments. So comment below. You'll also find in the description below our webpage, our email, let us know what you want. We're doing these from home. We would normally, um, normally you would come to the OSU campus upstairs in Langton, but for now, we're going to continue to do, put more episodes out. Subscribe. They're going to get better because you're going to help, help us know what, what it is that you want. Thank you again, and we'll see you at episode three. Bye.